wanted to take you through an in-depth review of portable air conditioner and my experience with it, some things that I learned that I haven't seen in other review videos. The one that we're going to be looking at is an Avalon dual hose portable air conditioner and um, it's Avalon um, Edge something and Winter or Winter, however you pronounce it, uh, Edge Star, I think is the other one. Anyway, they all seem to use the same um, reference model uh, or, or reference design, uh, especially for internal workings uh, and the, the back side of things and, and how it's all set up. So uh, before we take a look at it, um, some things to know about them is it's a lot of equipment in a small space and um, for being able to do uh, heating and cooling uh, you're shoving a lot of extra components in there when it's fairly simple and easy to buy a, a heater that can that can heat a room uh, so my advice for you if you're looking at one that does heat and air um, you might stick with just air and then just do space heater or something because heat is easy to produce uh, and you're cramming a lot of extra stuff and not a lot of space when you get one of these uh, portable air conditioners that's got heat built in it as well. Uh, it's just a lot going on. Uh, then if one fails, they're both out where, you know, a space heater you can get for 20 bucks at your big box store. Um, also, uh, it took us several tries to get one here, um, uh, four tries to get one here. Uh, we bought online, uh, we bought uh, pickup at store at big box stores, and in our part of the country, the dual hose models are not stocked normally on the shelves. So it was a special order deal, even if we got it through the store that carried it. Uh, so these are not designed to be shipped one of uh, on UPA, uh, on your uh, residential carrier, uh, nor are they designed, basically the only good way to ship them is a bunch of them on a pallet banded together or one on a pallet onto itself uh, with liftgate service uh, because any other thing you do with it they're going to tip over they're going to get laid down they're going to be uh, rolled around at distribution centers and the way that these things are made I'll show you in a minute um, if they're tipped at all the um, condenser unit I think it is uh, the condenser unit uh, on its soft mounts falls over into the coil and, or the lower coil and crushes it and ruins the unit. Uh, so we had three damaged units all through different delivery methods and the way we finally got a dual hose one here because our stores don't carry them is we found a company so a couple states away that were willing to take one new in the box band it upright onto a pallet by itself and put it on a freight truck and managed to get a really good rate uh, on the freight truck with lift gate service. Uh, they set it down in the driveway, we cut the bands off, lifted the top off the box and it's on casters and rolled it in the house. Uh, but just know that trying to buy it online, uh, having it shipped through regular carrier um, or even pick up at your local store. When it's a one-off, it's not going to go well. Now, if you've got a big box store that carries the dual hose models uh, to where they get pallets of them at a time, then you're probably okay. Uh, but I'll show you what to look for to see if it's ever been tipped over and damaged internally. Now, with this unit, the remote, the removal piece, that is the transmitter that notch is the receiver so the profile on it when you're sitting across the room from it 
you know, you've got to hold the remote way up overhead, aim downward to have any hope of controlling it, you know, using the remote as a remote. So for us, we decided to just leave that mounted on there. So here's the one that we've got, the Avalon dual hose unit. So, come on camera. So this air diverter up top that controls the direction of air, uh, it's an absolute joke. It's there for aesthetics, mainly the, the grate there to keep stuff from falling into it. Um, now the way that at least this one, uh, and I think maybe the winter, um, not sure about the edge star. Anyway, they're made with the remote that comes out and if uh, you ever lose the remote, the unit can be turned on and off, but it only goes into the last mode that you left it in with the remote. So if you lose the remote, it's going to be stuck in whatever the last mode was that it was in. So now to the back side of the unit, uh, you know, you've got your, uh, the air that's being conditioned here, drawn through the unit and blown out. And it's got a screen here, um, like a window unit filter. And, you know, there's some level of filtering there. Uh, it's not like a, a sure enough standalone filter. Uh, and then uh, this model, you see the clear plastic hose down there. It has the water pump to pump out the extra, extra uh, um condensate moisture that accumulates in the bottom of the unit pumps it out instead of having to have it shut off and drain the water pan in the bottom. So the theory behind the dual hose units versus the single hose units, um, the single hose unit uh, draws in, uh, no excuse me, the single hose unit uh, exhaust the uh, the created heat from the cooling process uh, discharges it out the exhaust hose. So that means that it's taking some of the air from in your house, then through the, the exchange coal, the heat that is shed is then pumped out of the house. So that creates a negative pressure in your home, which means that all the seals around your doors, windows, uh, etc., even through the attic and through outlets in the walls and stuff, uh, the negative pressure draws outside air into your home, which uh, in theory affects the conditioning ability of the air unit. So, uh, you know, in, in theory, the dual hose, it takes outside air in, runs it through the, the exchange coil and then heat back out to the outside world. So basically uh, no negative pressure and the, all the inside air is coming in the upper back of the unit uh, being cooled and then put out the output vents. So um, again, in theory, this means that your waste heat is put outside but it's using outside air to feed that process so no negative pressure so no inward draw into your living space uh, created by the unit if it were a single hose and these dual hose units can be run as single hose just your intake from the outside hose you would leave disconnected uh, and it would be a uh, just an open port on the back just like the single hose units are uh, it's just the dual hose units are made where you can fit a hose to it to bring the outside air in. So let's look a little more detail in that. Okay, so the intake port, and then you see the uh, condenser, compressor, I'm not saying it right, whatever. Uh, that piece down there, and then there's your coil across there and that support bar across the front of it. The prior three that we had shipped here through different means, this 
piece here would fall over into that coil and shove that coil over and crush that coil actually putting it into the squirrel cage blower fan that's over there uh, for the exhaust so and then in the bottom is a water pan uh, and you see the thing down there for the water pump to pump the water out and actually looking at it you can see there's a screw hole right there molded into the very bottom of the water pan uh, I just covered it with a flashlight and I'm moving it that screw hole there the mold for the bottom of the pan actually had a flaw that that's a hole through the bottom of the water pan so the water pan actually got full and overflowed before the float on the pump lifted to turn the water pump on so with these you want to make sure that the bottoms are actually made properly like they're supposed to be so that you don't have water leak out of the bottom of the unit before the pump were even to turn on or safety switch to cut the unit off until you empty the uh, water pan. So you'll notice also that this lower cavity, this intake port, and then there are these slots here which are just open into the back of the unit. So the way it's designed, the, uh, the intake port draws it through the coil and goes the exhaust, through the exhaust port. Well, then you've also got this opening here that you can see that I've taped shut. So with all these slots open here, if I am take and put this intake port here, but then all these slots here are open and not taped shut, well then I've just got outside air being able to come into my house and just flow right into my house or vice versa. So that's a major design flaw in this thing that you know you've got this intake hose port that just gets to come right here and just mix with air in your house so you're actually um, regardless of negative pressure or not you've got the outside air coming in or inside air going out and it's just like a big hole in the wall basically so i took some gorilla tape and or, or heavy duty tape and tape that shut um, to provide some barrier and then you'll notice too the way this thing is built this outer plastic shell is just that thick just an outer plastic shell including around the front tub of this thing so you've got this entire unit sitting in your house and you go through all the effort to insulate the hoses because the hoses are just like like a, a, a clothes dryer hose but plastic instead of metal so you take the time and effort to insulate and wrap these hoses but then all you got is just one sheet of plastic between you and whatever the outside temperature is just the way this unit's built because this box is not insulated i mean you'd have to knit a sweater and slide over it to try to insulate it now there was one thin layer of foam inside the front of this uh on one of the other models i hadn't opened this one to see but there was a thin layer of foam there just as a sound dampening material um but you know it's not much nothing that was going to be any type of thermal insulation by any means so you know another design flaw there and you know so i've got a layer of tape over those holes so that's a layer of tape between the inside of my house and the outside world as far as uh, climate control so uh, another bad design now these plastic hoses it's just that accordion type stuff um like the metal hose that you would see on a clothes dryer just plastic i mean they're um, translucent to a point so you've got this intake hose of air coming in from the outside world well there's no filter there's no screen there's no nothing on this hose so in order to keep the inside of your unit from filling up with dirt and even though I've done taking measures, you can see that that coil in there 
has some dirt on it and there's absolutely no way to open this unit to clean that coil so once it gets stopped up it's stopped up the only thing that I found that I could take and do is I took some of that cut to fit air filter material and I made with some heavy duty tape and that air filter material you see how dirty it is I made a filter that fit up in the end of the hose so that when the unit's running it sucks it against that, against that on the intake and I've got this taped off and then when it's not running just gravity keeps it right there well also what this helps to take and do uh, and I'll show you in a minute I did put some screen on the outside of the hose that wasn't there um, but uh, this is a hose to the outside both of these are hoses to the outside world to the inside of your home you can have uh, gnats uh, spiders snakes lizards birds any number of things that you don't want in your home can get in your home through these hoses because what comes with this is these hoses here but just bare and then the piece that actually mounts in the window sill that actually mounts in the window sill is just that plastic and then it's got holes in it for the hoses well that's no type of thermal barrier that's also no type of security uh, installation or barrier so uh, you'll see in a minute where I even improved on that um, did a lot of different improvements here but it just seems to be a constant losing battle so the notion that these units are portable uh, from the setup that I've got here uh, you know there's only one set of the pieces that I had to make use of uh, either in their supplied window piece or the window piece that I made uh, the pieces that actually have the hoses connect to them to snap the hose into place for these two hoses you only have enough for one window um, and then their little plastic flimsy panel enough for one window so the notion that this is portable and you're going to pack it to different rooms during the different times of day true enough it does have casters on the bottom but um, you know you would have to have extra equipment to have things mounted in other windows not to mention the fact that when you disconnect these hoses all you have is just that same thin plastic a plastic cap over each of these holes uh, to be your security and thermal barrier when you get it moved away from the window so you not only where I manufactured you know something extra for thermal and security for the, the window insert you would also have to figure out something to do to cap those off at the time that you were going to move the unit uh, to somewhere else and you know with these insulated hoses you know you're pulling the hoses off uh, and you're having to stash the hoses somewhere if you're just going to roll this into a corner out of the way um, so just the notion that it's portable and you roll it wherever you need it that's just laughable uh, all right, so what I did to insulate these hoses uh, is I took some fiberglass with foil over it, duct wrap, or, or it's a tube type that you put on smaller ductwork, and so it's got fiberglass and foil over this accordion plastic accordion hose, and you know I didn't want just that aluminum foil looking stuff just sitting here in my house so I went and got some black fabric uh, pipe sock for perforated pipe for like a French drain out in your yard uh, and I put that pipe sock over the foil and fiberglass insulation wrap to to make it less obnoxious looking in the house uh, so that was able to insulate the hose but that was a limited return uh, on investment because this is just a sheet of plastic this is just a sheet of plastic that's just a layer of heavy-duty tape uh, there's not a lot of climate 
uh, resistance or control going on here, uh, especially when the unit is sitting idle. Now, if it's moving and circulating air for the most part, um, taking a temperature gun, uh, yes, there is some either cold or heat shed off of this while it's running, um, but we found that this part here would get even hotter if it was not running uh, during, you know, a, a warmer day. Um, but then uh, the biggest benefit from these this insulation was on the exhaust hose because you're dumping cooled air here, but then here you had some severely high temperature because where it first comes out of here off of the squirrel cage blower, off of that coil, the heated air here, you know, we were hitting some very high temperatures on this plastic hose. It's wonder that the plastic hose, accordion hose, could handle it. So the biggest bit benefit from this wrap insulation was right here first coming out of the unit to keep that heat shed uh, while uh, running from getting dumped right back into the house. You know, heat coming right out of here and getting into the surrounding area. Um, so now let, let's take and look at this window a little bit. All right, so this window, again, like I showed you, what they send you is a couple pieces like this. They don't even made up good. There's air gaps in them. Uh, there's no security. Somebody can easily kick that in. Uh, and there's also no thermal resistance here. There's no insulation to be had out of this. It's just a sheet of plastic. So what I did is I took uh, this weather-treated plywood, and you can't just throw a piece of plywood in that's the width of your window and inspect everything to fit up tight and all that stuff. So what I did, you can see that there's a split in it here. So it went in in two sections, the section over here and the section over here. And then this piece here bolted on the back side of it with carriage head bolts. That way on the outside, there's no bolt head to grab a hold of. It's slick on the outside. So for security purposes, you know, this could be broken but it would take a lot more to break it because the bottom edge is down in the window seal down here to see below the window seal and then this here uh, it's just a heavier board so you can see the piece that I bolted here with two bolts on each side of the split to get it as strong as possible and then I actually have it anchored here on each side um, let's see if I can get over here anchored on each side into the stud surround of the window so that it would it would take a lot and I mean a lot to beat this out of here but then what you've got to consider uh, when you're doing this plate well that's your window partially raised not all the way raised oh and I also put some foam strip insulation seal in here on top of this uh, and then even on the outside edge it's siliconed around on top of this foam uh, but what you're doing when you raise a window partially is your window normally is designed for this to stop on that out there and have a weather seal where these meet but when you raise this window partially like this then you have an air gap here and an air gap here so what I found is, um, and it looks like my, my piece is already fallen out of here, but uh, I took some weather stripping light goes up the side of a door and had a piece of weather stripping in here, and then there's a piece of weather stripping in the top of here so that you have two seals here between the inside of your house and the outside world. So you've got to do that. And also, um, if I can get to focus, did that washer and that screw on that lip of the window seal at the bottom there, just for some extra reinforcement. All right, now outside, there's the intake. And you see the grid in there, the plastic square grid. 
that's the only keep something out that exists for that hose uh, and it's large enough uh, compared to my hand against it you know if somebody I mean not to mention that the the plastic piece that they gave you was just so flimsy but you know uh, a human hand could have punched that plastic square grid out and then uh, knock the hose loose from the inside and you know uh, managed to easily get the window open uh, you know if it was the plastic pieces that was provided with it now over here you see that nozzle that's on the end of that hose that's on the water pump that pumps the water out uh, if it had worked right you know if there hadn't been a hole in the drip pan that kept the float from rising so uh, what I did with the plywood you'll see that inside that rim I had to caulk all inside of that rim because had water sprayed through there you know my wood uh, plywood would have gotten wet so I had to take some caulk and seal it so it didn't get wet from that nozzle and then I took the plastic that they gave us and I made some cutouts and bought some window screen and screwed that to the board so that I have a tight screen against the inlet and outlet and this unit, we've only had it for less than a year. And you can see how dirty that is right there. So imagine all that inside the interior of your unit if I had not put that filter against the unit inside the hose at the other end. Um, just not a lot of common sense used in the design. So anyway, the board here, you see where I've got it put in and caulked. All the way around and I've got the, the foam strip here and uh, the there where I had it split and put the carriage head bolts so that you know it's as secure as it could be I mean it's still just plywood uh, I mean for that matter on windows glass somebody wants something bad enough they're gonna break in and take it but uh, you know, I wanted this versus just that piece of plastic, but you know, these screens are here and there's a expensive filter that they'll sell you to go on the intake port. Uh, but I, you know, I did what I did with the cutout filter and tape. Uh, and you know, the manufacturer website say, oh, well, you only need a filter on your intake if your air quality is bad. Well, I'm here to tell you, uh, if you ever have pollen, if you ever mow a yard, um, if you have any amount of dust on anything whatsoever, I mean, you'd have to be, I don't know, three or four stories up in an apartment building, and uh, I don't know, I think you'd still even have what's considered poor air quality there. I mean, just look at how nasty that is from less than a year. And all that could be inside that machine that I can't break open and clean in any way. It just, it doesn't make sense. And, you know, then also putting these additional screens over this against it would keep creepy crawlies out, spiders and lizards and snakes and whatnot. Because even with a screen over this window, you know, the big screen, you know, light goes on the window, you know you've seen where you can have spiders and lizards and little snakes and and everything else can get by that bigger screen so that's why it's necessary to cut these smaller make these smaller screens to cover those holes all right so i've had the unit running for a few minutes here um you're not gonna have any real way to perceive the loudness of it uh, over video by any means all the time so anyway we'll see that it absolutely cools 
little cooler on this side just the way that the airflow is out of the unit but you know it absolutely does its job now with this particular unit the timer setting is misleading in description versus application uh, and also with this and similar units the blower fan uh, is always running at some speed regardless of whether the unit is cooling or not um, it just it's going to always have the blower going at some speed this one has an automatic mode to where the the blower can slow down but it always runs when the unit is on so it's not like your window unit that will shut entirely off when it's not needed to cool uh, this is going to always be making noise for as long as it's on now something that pre-sale that didn't get volunteered to us and we didn't know to ask the question uh, you know it did take us several tries to get a uh, intact unit here to us because the the situation of our local big box stores not carrying the dual host units that we wanted or thought we wanted so um, should anything break in this machine or it have trouble or you know there was some shipping damage that was not made apparent until after the fact um, the only way to have these units serviced is by an approved service center which the improved service center is the manufacturing facilities so the only way to have one of these units worked on is by the manufacturer and while they warranty um, the unit and whatever parts they have to put into it you are responsible for the return shipping so with the shipping challenges we've already covered should you ever have to have your unit worked on uh, because we had to have it shipped from the manufacturer to get it here in one piece being a one-off shipment they don't ship one off very well so the only hope you would have of getting this to the manufacturer for a warranty repair would be to keep all the original box intact the original pallet and have a banding tool and then have a freight truck come pick it up at your expense with a lift gate to take it to the manufacturer so that they can perform repairs on it and then beyond that I don't know if you're responsible for the shipping from them back to you or not but uh, I know that once we finally got to that conversation at some point you know it was uh, owner is responsible for return shipping for the repair work even though the repair might be warranted so that's just something else to know about these units now also for security I took and cut some one by one to go on the top of the window and screwed into the stud in the window facing so that you know where this window is only um, you know it's it's partially open um, that on each side it's blocked to where this window is not going to be raised with any amount of strength you'd have to break the window you can't raise the window so that coupled with what I built down there uh, it, it's some level of security not ideal some level of uh, temperature barrier uh, not as great as I would have liked so um, you know it, it this design theoretically has a lot of promise but the fact that all the major manufacturers are using the same reference design you know what's my conclusion on it was it worth all the extra efforts that I went through to do the dual hose because of the thinking that negative pressure would affect my heating and cooling more um, you know to do the dual hose instead of the single hose well in theory it was the right idea but in practice with the way this thing is built I really didn't achieve much doing the dual hose um, just because of the flaws that I pointed out and the way that things are made um, that you don't gain much by the dual hose um, 
Now, is there uh, any difference in cooling factor being dual hose? Uh, not really, uh, because uh, you know it's exchanging hot air for hot air versus cool air for, for hot air. Um, so no massive gains there. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, was it worth the expense? Well, once I got one here and knowing to make sure that that coil or that, that support, if that support bar is straight, then that coil is okay. If that support bar looks like a horseshoe, um, you, your coil is no good. Uh, the unit's got internal damage. Uh, but for what we needed, uh, uh, previous season, we were on the last legs of Central Air Unit, and we were just trying to help it out. And did this unit achieve that to help us get to the end of the season to make it to cooler temperatures to replace the Central Air? Yes, it, it got us there. Uh, it got us there noisily. Uh, I would not say that this unit is any louder than a big window unit. Uh, I might even say it's slightly quieter than a big window unit, but I mean a big window unit. Um, so, you know, what are the advantages of this versus a window unit? Well, you know, the cost is higher than a comparable window unit. Um, so, true enough, with a window unit, you have protrusion outside of your home. Uh, a window unit can be kicked out of its hole uh, and your house broken into. Uh, a window unit is a, unfortunately an easy point of entry when it's at ground level. Uh, so, you know, what I call, what I've done to improve things here, uh, more secure than a full-size window unit sitting in the hole? Uh, probably so, unless there was a lot of wrought iron and other ugly things that I just don't want outside of my home. Um, you know, if, if I had to do it again, um, knowing what I know now, uh, being we were trying to just limp along a central air unit to cooler times to be able to replace it, uh, I'd have probably just went cheaper and went with a window unit temporarily. Uh, as far as benefits of a dual hose, uh, which is not stocked in our area versus a single hose, the negative pressure and the difference in cooling because of the negative pressure is not enough to justify the amount of insulation cost that you have to do here to fight a losing battle that, again, this is just a thin layer of plastic that's not insulated. Uh, and they all use the same reference design with this opened up here. Uh, just a bad design. It's like it was an afterthought. Oh, let's convert this up to a, a dual hose system. Uh, they're not designed to be worked on uh, in dealing with the other units that came in severely damaged. Uh, getting a look at how they're actually built. Uh, there is no good way to pull this thing apart to work on it. Uh, you know, like that hole that's in the bottom drain pan down there that needs to be capped so that the drain pan and float and pump will work as it actually should. Uh, what you can't do is lay this unit down. It's an air unit. It's got to remain in an upright position. Uh, if you lay it down, the, the condenser, compressor, whatever the proper word is, uh, you know, it's got to be back upright for, um, you know, so many days so that the oil drains back into it so it doesn't damage it when you turn it on. And anyway, I, I'm doing a butcher's job of explaining all that, but, you know, it's got to remain in an upright position so there's no easy way to just fix a simple hole in the bottom of it because you'd have to lay it down. And the way that it's assembled, when you pull the back off this thing, or actually you pull the screws out the back and the front comes off, it kind of goes to pieces. So uh, then also there's uh, voltage requirements. We had to, this particular unit uh, draws, uh, well, it's, it had to have every bit of a 15 amp circuit to itself. So we had to find a leg of service um, 
in our home to be able to hook it to so that we weren't tripping a breaker um, and uh, you know I I don't know what else I can share with you other than I've it's been a lot of information uh, I, I had intended to make this a more entertaining video but just the lack of information out of there and with what I've got on my plate other things to do um, I, you know for those that have suffered through to learn as much as they can about these units uh, you know I hope it's time well spent for you uh, that they're just there's not in-depth reviews out there about these units that I had found at least when I purchased mine so you know hopefully some of the information here will help you make educated decision um, so that you know you can do what's best for your household so all in all um, in theory a lot of the right ideas but in real world implementation leaving a lot to be desired uh, things not considered or not cared about uh, you know if the manufacturers will get away from this one reference design uh, and put some real world application thought into the layout design come up with a new product uh, one that's designed in such a fashion that it can be worked on can be opened up to be cleaned uh, and it'll just survive a uh, a delivery truck uh, shipment uh, you know it would have value in that to even exceed the cost that they're selling out now and be worth it um, so uh, again hope this helps